Hey, hi guys, welcome. Yesterday, we started on the subject of the Beatitudes. This is the significance of trying to find happiness, of being blessed, of, of understanding happiness through God's eyes and doing it God's ways. We said yesterday, it's not about doing stuff because if it was doing stuff, the Pharisees would have been very happy people, but they were absolutely miserable old codgers and they were so bound to the law of the thou shalt not do's and the thou shalt all these different things. And they thought that if I could just do better, if I could just do stuff and, and get this thing right, then I would be of all people most blessed. Well, unfortunately for them, that didn't cut it. And I guess that's good and applicable to us today. It's not about doing, we said yesterday, it's about being. It's the attitudes of people who have the be attitudes. Now, we said yesterday that we were going to talk about the first one. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, the, the incentive is huge. Who wouldn't want the kingdom of God? But the kingdom of God is not there for, for to be grabbed and not there to be, you know, taken upon, you know. It's there to be given to people who live out a life that starts at the right place. Blessed are the poor in spirit. What does that mean? Well, it's very easy. Blessed are the humble. Blessed are those who realize they can't do it on their own. Blessed are those who come to God with a sense of spiritual bankruptcy to say, God, I, I have nothing to offer to you other than my sinfulness and the baggage that I've accumulated along the way. I've got nothing to offer you. Why on earth would you love someone like me? And when we come to God, on our knees saying that, we actually call that repentance, where we say, Lord, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of trying to do this in my own way. I'm sick and tired of the guilt that I've accumulated. And then I find out that you love me and I find out that you have died for me. Jesus, can you forgive me of my sin and let me bypass all this rubbish that I have been led to believe. It starts on your knees or maybe even in a sense on your face as we lie and we we, we kneel before God and we declare ourselves to be spiritually bankrupt. We are poor in spirit. We often talk in church about God needing you, God, God uh, you know, wanting to use your gifts and your abilities and your talents and your time. Ah, God doesn't need all that stuff. You don't need all that stuff. It's nice for him to have that he can use you in those particular areas. But God needs you to come to Him, not what you can offer to Him, but what He can offer to you. And that is salvation through repentance and through a, a deep sense of understanding that I need God. That's where it all begins. If you've started down the track and thinking, well, let me just bypass repentance, let me bypass the cross, let me bypass the humility factor, and let me, let me join in at the point of after the cross where, where I'm in ministry doing stuff and helping people. And, and you've missed the point. You have had a false start. You've had a false start. And when you get to the end of the race, like many athletes, and they, and they find out, they look back and they run with every ounce of energy they have the race. And they find, hey, it was an illegitimate race. It was a false start. So I appeal to you people, listen, man, you've got to begin at the beginning. And the beginning begins with you on your knees declaring to God, I need you more than anything else. All I have to offer you is my brokenness and my guilt. Will you save me? Jesus termed this being born again. Now I've heard people use that term facetiously and almost obnoxiously, but it's terminology Jesus used. Unless you are born again at the point of spiritual rebirth, then you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. I didn't say that. I would have said it far more nicely than that. But that's what Jesus says. There will be no one in heaven on that day when the time closes and the curtain on this world closes and we begin eternity in heaven. Then there'll be no one in heaven who's got there standing upright, tall and proud and saying, I got you through my own good works and my own ability. There won't be anybody like that. Everybody in heaven will have got there because they started on their knees. I love the, the parable in Luke chapter 18, where it's the story of the, the, the Pharisee and the tax collector. And Jesus make it a very blatant point. I hope you get it. 
He says the Pharisee and the tax collector went one day down to the temple to pray. And the Pharisee waited for the place to get full and everybody was there who was ever anybody. And he made his entry and he walked in wholly proud and he hadn't eaten so he wanted to look weak. He had, he had given his tithe, he had done all these things. And he stood in front of the people with a loud voice he proclaims, Oh Lord, it's been a tough week, man. I have tithed. In fact, I've given more than my tithe. I've given generously to the cause of people. Lord, I, I, I've been fasting this week. Can you see how weak I look? Man, I'm hungry, eh? Hey? Lord, are you, are you impressed with, with that? And he would go on and tell God how good he was. And God, he couldn't stand it. and had to look away from the Pharisee. And then God turned his eyes toward a tax collector <laughs> sitting in the corner. And the Bible says he couldn't even lift his eyes to heaven. He just held his, held his head in his hand. And he, then he beat upon his chest and he said, Oh God, forgive me because I am a sinner. And Jesus once said, Hey guys, who do you think had his prayer answered? Who do you think was justified before God that day? Quite obviously the point was the sinner. The guy who acknowledged his sin. They were both sinners. But the one acknowledged it and the other one tried to make up for it. When we come to God in brokenness and we repent of our sin and ask God to redeem us, that's when it all begins. I don't know if you, many of you have ever been to Bethlehem. It's a beautiful place. But if you want to go into where the, 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 the manger scene would have been, they've got a very small and a very low door. And you look at this, you say, well, man, there's some tall people out there. Why would, why would there be this, this narrow and this very low door? And then I, I seem to recall a statement above there that says, if you want to come in here, no one comes in here proudly, standing straight and tall. You bend when you come into the presence of the king. It's true. I hope you haven't had a false start. If you had, you know, if you know what to do. Get back on your knees. And make sure that your repentance is real. Guys, thank you for the extra time you've given me today. Go and have a fantastic day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.